guys, how's it going? We've got a special one for you today. We have my dad, Mike, here to answer a bunch of questions. We've done similar Q&A videos with my mom a couple of times, but dad has always been a little bit more behind the scenes. Mom's like the social... I'm the bashful one. <laughs> Soft-spoken, a... yeah. 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 Uh, so me. I did not bribe or drag him into this video. No. I promise he agreed to do this. When totally I, good. I've asked you kind of throughout the years, but never really pushed it. But when we put the uh, question out there, letting you guys know that he had agreed to do this video, I think it went out on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. We got close to 2,500, possibly more questions wow. for this Q&A. Isn't that crazy? Boy. You guys are awesome. Uh, what I did is I went through and I grabbed some of the most popular questions. So I think we're just gonna jump right in because I think a lot of the information about your background and you know how you feel about things and where you see gardening going, all that stuff is gonna come out in the answers. So do you wanna just? Yeah. Head into Let's it? it. Yep. Okay. Yep. So Addie Christensen said, how did you get started in the garden slash seed business? Well, you know, it basically it started with my employment there when I was just a kid in high school, you know, pushing brooms, bagging seed potatoes, mm -hmm. doing all the menial chores. And I still do that stuff today. Seven, you were 17, <laughs> right? 17 years old. Yeah. And, uh, kept that job through my college years mm -hmm. and that kind of deal. And, and always went back. Um, and it just worked out the way it worked out. Mm -hmm. the, we had a small garden store there. Um, your mom was very influential, of course, in mm -hmm. establishing and bringing up to date the, the garden center and, and the addition of the nursery. Mm -hmm. You know, it was both of our passion, both of our love. And, and we got into it, we took baby steps. Mm -hmm. We didn't just say, voila, here's a, here's a nursery yeah. and this is what you got today. Um, but rather we just took these baby steps and did little things and expanded slowly mm -hmm. and everything just worked. Mm -hmm. Doors kept opening. It, it, it's a great business to be in, you know, so. Yeah. I remember when I was little where the glassed in portion is in your sunroom, that used to be a slat house or what we, I don't know. Yeah, we, we called just it called it the slat house. house. It was, we sold bedding plants out of this yeah. little wooden attachment to the was, side of the building. Was that the first? area you had plants or yeah. you talked about putting uh, fruit trees or roses or something like that on yeah. pallets and yeah. bringing them out every day. That was really the beginning of the what is now the nursery mm -hmm. and the way that worked was we took oh I don't know what it was I went to the owner at the time and told him hey we, we need to buy some roses we had I'll, I'll back up a little bit we bought the lumber yard next to us and mm -hmm. we had this vast expanse of of area for us where the nursery is now where the nursery yeah the where the nursery mm -hmm. setting and there was nothing there at all we just used we bought that property i guess just to have it mm -hmm. and we used it to turn semis around when we were loading truckloads of seed and so i looked at that area and your mom was at home raising you kids at this mm -hmm. time and being an at-home mom mm -hmm. but she was always a force behind you know you know behind the scenes of what we were doing there mm -hmm. and i so I went to the owner and I said, hey, I think we should get some roses. So roses were the first thing that kicked it off. And I bought 50 roses from a place. Late 80s? This would have been, yeah, yeah, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, mm -hmm. And we bought these Pan Am Canadian roses that came in a cardboard box, kind of looked like a milk carton. I remember that. Now the owner at the time said, well, you sure, you know, we're not a rose store. And I said, well, we're getting asked all the time if we sell roses, so if we can sell them, maybe we sh should be doing it. Yeah. He goes, okay, go ahead. So I thought I was really sticking my neck out on the line on this one. I bought 50 roses. Oh. And I thought, <laughs> oh gosh. And sold. we sold all but one, I think. You, you, when you have inventory, mm -hmm. I don't think you ever sell it all. It's tough. If I'd have bought yeah. 100, we would have probably had three or four left. Sure. Well, anyway, so that was a success. The next year we bought 100. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just took Baby off. Baby steps. And yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, Chelsea Joyce DeWitt said, when did you come to actually love gardening? Did you love helping your parents as a kid or was it a chore then? And the love came later. I think gardening was a hit and miss when I was still at home mm -hmm. with my parents. I had a younger brother, Tim, yeah. that loved to garden mm -hmm. and he was more hands-on with it. I just never took the time to do it. Mm -hmm. So it was something that grew on me over time mm -hmm. and the interest in plants and specific cultivars and and what they do here, or maybe what we can force to grow here. Mm -hmm. You know, so all of that stuff came later after I'd started mm -hmm. there, not as a child. It's funny because 
you're always getting in trouble for like sneaking in little like random cultivars that you've seen in a catalog and you'll order a bunch of plugs yeah. and all of a sudden they'll show up and my mom's kind of more in charge of like the garden center plant order side of things while you run the seed side and she's like where did all of these plugs come from yeah she gets a little possessive of her territory <laughs> And so all of a sudden, a pallet of stuff shows up, yeah. a bunch of plugs. She goes, well, we have to pot these. Mm -hmm. I said, well, we have employees that can do that. <laughs> and these what are cool plants. About? And, and I thought, these things will sell. Yeah. They're awesome. And do they? most of the time they do. Yeah, see. Yeah. There you go. But I do the same thing at home. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll sneak stuff home. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, a row of something will show up that she knows nothing about. And she'll, yeah. what's this? Yeah. When did I plant this? What? what? A Coreopsis <laughs> being one. Very and now she loves it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Katie said, I have so many questions for you. What part of your job do you love the most? And what is the most challenging? Uh, let's start with that. What part of your job do you love the most? Oh, gosh, there's so much of it. I think it's just the victories, Yeah. you know, bringing things together and making it work. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've got 21 employees or 15 employees or depending on the time of year it is. Everybody's doing something and networking with each other, with me, and you know, seeing everything come together and work mm -hmm. is probably the biggest awe moment, yeah. you know, for me. Mm -hmm. Of course, financially too, the numbers, I do all of that in, mm -hmm. the, in the administration of the business. And there's a, same thing goes there. Mm -hmm. When it works, it's working, yeah. you know, and so, yeah. Let's. Do you find that when we're in a tough year, like a recession, this is not one of the questions, but I'm just curious, um, like during a recession year, do you see that like the nuts and bolts part of gardening goes up while the fluff kind of goes down like fountains and like, do you see some of those? We seem to maintain, I wouldn't say on those kind of years that we would get an increase in the fluff, mm -hmm. but it does maintain Keep itself it because it's there. Yeah. And in years where the economy's tighter, um, the garden industry, plants, people planting edibles yeah. to consume themselves, planting their own food. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the deals that um, really clicks mm -hmm. when the economy's down. People are staying home yeah. and they're doing more of that kind of stuff. Right. And also, aside from the edibles, when people are staying home, what do they do? You know, they're, they're not buying boats and cars and going on big vacations. Mm -hmm. They're staying home working in their yard. Mm -hmm. So our business tends to stay pretty level That's through really those nice. times. That's really nice. And uh, just to explain, because I don't know where it's going to come out, the um, Andrews, can you explain kind of the different factions, departments? Because you have a huge seed side, yeah. the cleaning and distribution. Do you want to explain a little bit about how that works? Yeah, the, you know, basically Andrews Seed Company is a seed company, an agricultural seed company. We produce, uh, contract with growers in the area and some out of the area that grow alfalfa seed for us. Mm -hmm. And and red clover seed is the other one, more minor, but alfalfa seed is the main one. Mm -hmm. And all the other agricultural seeds, we sell about everything. Mm -hmm. And that the rest of the stuff we source, outsource. Mm -hmm. So we're not basic in that stuff, mm -hmm. but the alfalfa seed is the main thing. Mm -hmm. And certain times of the year, that's where majority of the employees are. Fortunately, we're able to cross use employees yeah. and move them into the nursery when that part gets busy. Mm -hmm. So it's a perfect complement yeah. to the to the you know those different divisions and the employees stay forever like how long has yeah. Juan been there what's it Juan's been there for about ready to retire oh, I'll bet 30 but, some yeah. years I 30 yeah. something I, I think yeah he's gonna retire but he's already said he's gonna come back and Good. work I think Tuesdays Wednesdays and Thursdays mm -hmm. yeah long-standing employees down yeah. at Andrews yeah. which is really nice they know the ins and outs and like Juan for example because you were saying you can cross use employees he comes to the garden center in the summer and then goes to the seed plant in the right. fall winter right. early spring so it's nice that you don't have to lay people off sure. you know which is sure. in that in this industry that's a usual thing I think to have happen yeah. especially like garden center wise so anyway um the last part of that question what's the most challenging part of raising a family and running a business well, I was fortunate because Susan was staying home with you guys when you were growing up, mm -hmm. and she just handled everything. Mm -hmm. I know when I was when I was when I was a kid, and I goofed up at home. It was always wait till your dad gets home, oh. kind of a deal. <laughs> yeah. So here I was waiting for dad to get home, and punishments coming. Mm -hmm. Well, Susan just handled everything. Yeah, you don't right mess on with my right mom. on the spot. <laughs> so I got yeah. to come home and be the good guy. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. during those years, which isn't always fair to her, but. She did it, and so when we were first starting to expand, 
and what otherwise could have been a real stressful situation that way wasn't. That's nice. And you kids got involved as well. When we started getting more plants, um, you know, the plants need stewarding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so part of that was watering. And, and during the hot months of the year, you couldn't skip Sundays. Right. We were always closed on Sundays. But Still all are. we had to do was buy a couple of pizzas and throw them out on a table. And we had watering labor for a Sunday. So <laughs> I don't know if that was a fair trade. <laughs> Exactly, no, but we did it. But it sure worked you, for you guys yeah. then. Yeah, you do what you uh, you've yeah. got to do as a family to keep it keep it together. Exactly. Yep. And I remember, so when we were growing up too, we actually lit, I can see the, the tree. It's a big oak tree right in the backyard of yeah. our first yeah. house. I can see it from where we live right now, which is really cool. But I remember you would you had a side hustle, like you'd work full time all day, and then you would um, like bring one of us kids with you, and we get to rotate and take turns, and he would go take care of you go take care of lawns like fertilizing. You'd have them on a uh, schedule. I don't know how many yeah. lawns you took care of, but oh, I, probably thirty or forty mm -hmm. different places or in between there somewhere. That started when um, the first time I started that we I did that. Uh, just for so we could take a vacation every year and pretty much whatever we wanted to do because mm -hmm. it was fairly nice that money we were earning then yeah. um, and then it became when you kids got a little older and started in school and we started you in the private Lessons. school oh, yeah. um, then I, I that's when I ramped up the yards about doubled them and was doing more just to pay for the tuition in schools because mm -hmm. we didn't have the money to yeah. do that the sacrifice yeah so you know, that's crazy. just yeah it worked out. Yeah. And yeah. lessons, they had us all in piano and ballet and all of yeah. that extra stuff on one income, you know, well, one income plus all that extra side hustle, uh, which now like having kids and, and I don't know, you have a different perspective. I have a different perspective of what you guys did for mm -hmm. us back then. Um, what is your favorite thing to do with your grandbabies? Mm, scare them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you scare uh, yeah, I'm a little bit of a scary sort at first. Takes no. them a while. <laughs> took every single one of them. It took a little bit of time for them to kind of warm up did to Benjamin me. Did Benjamin take a while? I know Samantha did. Well, Benjamin maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. Samantha did. She was um, like that with all guys except for Aaron's brother Tim. She's always loved him. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Just right. Yeah. 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 They had a connection. Uh, you know, Joe that. seems to be that way too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it just. And then, then I became the gentle giant mm -hmm. to them. And, and, and I found too that with almost every single one of them, even Joe's kids, all I had to do was just feign indifference and act like I was, you know, and then all of a sudden there they were yep. right in my lap. Yep. So, yeah. And what is your fondest memory of me? <laughs> Have you ever even thought uh, about that? Notorious memory yeah. or fondest memory? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I remember I once you standing at the entrance to the bathroom with a real proud look on your face when you were about two and a half or three years old yeah. with Comet cleaning powder all over you. <laughs> and, and your mom had put kid-proof handles on the cabinets in there. Uh -huh. <clears throat> there was none of them you couldn't open. And the one that made you the maddest was when she just put rubber bands around the two knobs because you'd get your hand stuck in it. You'd pull it apart without stick your hand in, mm -hmm. and you'd get your hand stuck in there. Um, those are things that we talk about, you know, when, when different things come up when you guys were kids. Yeah. And I remember you, when I would drive home and get home from work and pull into the driveway, you were always the first one that busted out the door, mm. come running down the sidewalk and down the driveway. Mm. <laughs> so. Oh. Um, Sarah said, I would love to ask where you get your inspiration for all your great gift ideas for mom. I think they're referring to the advent. I shared with you guys last year, you put together an advent calendar, but it was an intense advent. It's this a beautiful, where did you get that? That it's like got little drawers for every day. It might've been a, a acorn, acorn or PBS yeah. catalog or acorn catalog, one of those. And I saw it and it had that old world look to it, mm -hmm. even though it was like a hundred bucks or less than a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, that has a look that she'll like. Mm -hmm. Well, and I even thought she was going to think it was kind of corny or hokey when I first put it out. Oh. But the purpose behind it was we had 24 drawers in there to open, and I wanted to put something in each drawer. Uh -huh. So every day during that period of time, she could pull that drawer out and have a gift. It ranged from, like, fancy chocolates <coughs> to gift cards to jewelry. Like, yeah. beautiful jewelry. Yeah, there, there was, yeah. There was, like, three or four drawers that had jewelry in yeah. them, and then... Well, we're doing a remodel on our home this year, and so this year those drawers are empty. Oh, yeah, yeah remodels. <laughs> Actually, Christmas. our house is so tore up, we're just leaving it put away. Yeah. This year, mm -hmm. next year it'll be back. Yeah. And it will uh, be. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Did you get that idea from somewhere or did it just kind of like... Looking through the catalog and saw it and thought she would like the look of it. And then I doubted myself. And then once I got it, she loves it. Yeah. Not just because of the gifts. I, I would get gift cards from places I knew she liked. Mm -hmm. And then I would write little tags that would fit in those little drawers. And if, let's say I got her a gift card for a hundred bucks from somewhere, mm -hmm. and then I'd make ten little tags that say ten dollars each. Oh, nice! And so you know, so up. I had enough stuff to put in all the drawers. Yeah, because yeah. that's a lot. Of, if you yeah, you don't want to spend a hundred bucks on every day. No, no, no. <laughs> that adds up. Uh, Purr said, "I've always wanted to know your thoughts about my decision to do videos full time and not be involved in the gar as involved in the garden center like I used to, and how did I break it to you?" It was more of us. It was a, what we call soft pedaling because it, it was a long time coming. Yeah. We could see it developing. Mm -hmm. We could see it happening. We knew what kind of drive you had. We knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then I think what sealed it, I don't know which one of you did it first or if you did it at the same time, but you quit your jobs. You and did. You, you did. did. Aaron did first. And then yeah. I knew. I knew. And then, you know, to me, it's like I'm a generation removed from. What are they doing? YouTube? I remember that. I'm like, I don't think my parents understand <clears throat> no, what we're how, actually doing. <laughs> how in the world does this happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I remember one day you called me and you were like, so are you coming to work sometime this month? I just, just wondering. Like, you were careful about it. I don't know why. Yeah, you were kind of joking about it. Yeah. I was like, no, I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I'm done. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, and at the very beginning, I thought, well, it could be a flash in the pan. She'll yeah. be back. Sure. But uh, mm -hmm. no. well, we all thought, you know, you never know. You know I mean, we're realists, Aaron and I. Yeah. Well, with the talent on both ends of this, it just it makes it work. It, and, it did come together. You know, if you didn't have that and didn't have that mutual interest and cooperation, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, we have people know? ask us all the time, like, how do you how do you get this going? I'd love to do that kind of thing, and I just I want to say, well, you have to have the duo. You have to have like because you cannot do everything yourself. Well, let me ask a question. Yeah. So. How often have you guys gotten a comment, how in the world do you work together and stay married? Oh, I think you've got this too. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just answer it now. Yeah. We, we, I get that question all the time. And I think the biggest thing, especially for Susan the, and me, the biggest thing is knowing your bounds. Mm -hmm. We each have different areas that we take care of. Yeah. But at the same time, we also respect each other enough to talk about it first. Yeah. Even though if it's, hey, I'm going to go spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on seed. You know, seed inventory. Yeah. Well, you know, start. I'll start talking to her about it, and, you know, and she'll say, "Okay, where are we at here? Where are we at here?" And then, mm -hmm. you know, so as long as we're both in agreement, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, it's just a mutual respect. I think yeah. it's an obvious answer. Well, I think too. <clears throat> I mean, it depends on your dynamics, but I think you and mom are pretty equal. I mean, yeah, you balance each other, and I think Aaron and I balance <clears throat> each other really well. Yeah. And we agree on the important things: money, religion. All those things, you know. Well, I always tell <laughs> Politics, people. Politics, we agree I, on those I, I've things, always yeah. told people, kind of tongue in cheek, but I tell people, if you see us walking along down the railroad tracks, we're working stuff out. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. sometimes you got to take that walk. Yep, yep, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, so Bonnie said, I would love to hear the story of how you met and fell in love with uh, mom. Well, long story short, I'll make it as short as I can. Uh, when I first started working there at Andrews. Probably it was the second year I was there. I was probably 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the guys there would go down, a lot of the old guard there, the, the guys that worked there, would always go down to the sandwich shop. And so I started going with them, and there she was working at a sandwich shop. So they kept goading me. They said, she's looking at you. She's looking at you. <laughs> I said, no, I was bashful. And so finally I worked up the nerve to go back in there when none of them were around, mm -hmm. these coworkers. I had to do it going by myself. Mm -hmm. So I went in, I think it was a Saturday, and went in, asked her for a date, and she turned me down. She did? Yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah. Oh. She said, no, no, I'm busy, I, you know, something like that. And I said, okay, and I, I had enough skills, I guess. I just continued visiting with mm -hmm. her a little bit, yeah. ordered my food, and mm -hmm. left. And as I was going out the door, she, she stopped me and said, wait a minute. She goes, but I'm free tomorrow night. Aww. And I said, okay, uh -huh. tomorrow's good. Well, she had had a date with somebody the first night that I asked her. Mm -hmm. And so the second night, she went, that's the next night she went out with me. And I think seven months later, we were married. Dang. And I don't think there was a day or two went by that we weren't together from that first date on. Mm -hmm. It was just. 
until yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. So crazy. And we're still together every day. So that sandwich shop is called Belly Buster, and it was about five, six blocks down the road, and now yeah. it's on your premises. That's kind of odd too. It came full circle. Yeah. Now we lease that. That the old building burnt down, mm -hmm. and now we lease Belly Buster, our building out on the corner. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I love it. Always good nostalgia there. Um, Jane said, I'd love to hear about the changes you've seen in the farming slash growing from seed industry in the last 45 years. You know, I think the biggest change, and I don't experience it firsthand, the, probably the biggest change is the advent of the, the, the GMOs, mm -hmm. genetically modified stuff. That just stirred up the seed world, polarized things a little bit. I think it's a little more accepted now mm -hmm. than it was. Like, what's there really to be scared of? Mm -hmm. We just made a decision to be a non-GMO seed company mm -hmm. a decade, a couple decades ago, made that decision and stuck to it. I've never studied it enough to know or be able to debate anybody on it, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't. Yeah. But that's just where we're at. That was one of the biggest changes. Uh, right now we're going through a, a big change where it's a lot harder to find growers now. That's why, you know, a lot of our production now is up in the Columbia Basin area. Mm -hmm. It used to be all right here. The growers just aren't there anymore. Is it older farmers just retiring or being done? That, that's and part of it. You know, a lot of our grower base from 20 and 30 years ago did get old and retire, and a lot of the kids did not want to stay on and do it. Mm -hmm. And growing seed as a seed crop can be a little more difficult mm -hmm. uh, because of the pollinator issues mm -hmm. the growers here have to buy leaf cutter bees usually canadian bees mm. and to pollinate their crop and in our area there's diseases that you know and parasites that affect the bees enough mm -hmm. to where they can't self-sustain their bee population mm -hmm. so every year they have to buy an ad and that's a big expense right up to, right off the top mm -hmm. you know and, and the inputs now are so high and the markets stay so, the you know, seed that comes from across the border in, in Canada and comes mm -hmm. down this way is always real cheap. Mm -hmm. That downward pressure keeps the prices a little lower mm -hmm. when the growers are needing more. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's a difficult, and we're right in the middle of it. Mm. Why is so. Canadian seed so much cheaper? They grow it up there mostly as a catch crop. Oh. And they grow some great product up there too. Okay. And then, and then like everybody else, there's some that's not so great. Sure. But they, I've been told that a lot of them will take a cutting of hay, mm -hmm. and then catch crop at the end of the season gotcha. and harvest what what makes seed. And, double dip and they them. have the bees. Sure. They've got the bees there, so they don't need to mm -hmm. do the same thing we need to do. Sure. You know. Do you see an increase? Well, you talk about the the pest pressure on the leaf cutters. Um, do you see any increase in biological control, like how we did the predatory mites? I'm watching that. Yeah. I'm interested in that Me because too. I think if people get enough enough of it out there and invest in it, mm -hmm. it'll pay dividends because they're having to spray an awful lot right now for different, you know, yeah. insect pests right. and alfalfa, not just mites. Mites, oftentimes, when they manifest late summer, the hot part of the year they start desiccating and defoliating an alfalfa field mm -hmm. by their heavy pressure mm -hmm. that does the growers a favor oh. it's you know when a plant gets under stress it starts setting seed oh, there you go. more heavily sure and it's also easier for them to get it to dry down mm -hmm. and then run a combine through to harvest never thought about it that yeah. way <laughs> so they can be a favor yeah. if they get bad early they've got to do sure. controls for them but. and it just costs so much like the the cost of the chemical or product or whatever the equipment mm -hmm. the labor so if you can get after some biologicals i mean we're just experimenting yeah. with that now and, and we've seen property. firsthand how that works yeah and I, I do see some major benefits it'll be interesting to see over time if that catches certainly uh patricia said i'd like to know what is the one piece of advice you were given that you followed and would like to share if anything oh you know, one of the, or the owner at Andrews, when I was hired there, watched us doing these baby steps that mm -hmm. I mentioned, mm -hmm. but he was always, he was a graduate of the Harvard School of Business. Mm -hmm. Sharp guy, but old school, yeah. way old school compared to today. But he always said, just watch your core. Don't stay, stray too far from your core. Stay in your lane. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, remembering that we've done some, you know, <clears throat> wacky things maybe, but not in a big way mm -hmm. to where it could hurt us. Sure. And then some of those things became very successful. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know. 
Well, because we, we've always talked about how cool it would be to do like a farm-to-table restaurant or something that was yeah. connected to the business. But then you kind of start thinking, like, I just need to stay in my lane here, you know? Yeah. You know, we deal with plants. We deal with perishables. Yeah. Boy, a farm, a restaurant? Talk about perishables. Wouldn't that be so cool? And what a wonderful, like, dovetail to a, a yeah. garden center. I don't yeah. know. I mean, we've always talked about like either a coffee shop or a something like that that was a little bit more... Garden based. Yeah, and, and then always that thought in the back of your mind too. We've got good friends in this town mm -hmm. that own restaurants and operate restaurants. Yep. And they're successful, but they work very hard yeah, at let's it. Let's support them. And, do and, that. and, and I'm like, yeah. oh, what would they think of us if we did this? Yeah, yeah small town, <laughs> so, you do have to be careful uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Emma said, um, I'd like to hear your <laughs> I'd like to hear your comments on the new addition to your house. And the builder's suggestions. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's I'll tell you what. I complain. I can whine a lot about it. Uh -huh. Susan is positive. And I have felt terrible because I've drug her down a couple of times with my attitude. <laughs> and I'm trying to. Now, I think we're entering the second half of the project now. Mm -hmm. And I'm really trying to make an effort to think about it every day mm -hmm. and support her with my attitude because Nothing you can it really should be a fun it. process. Yeah. And, I, and I was the one that was making it not so fun. Mm -hmm. And she has her down days too with sure. it. Yep. And, but she should have me supporting her on mm -hmm. those down days, yeah. not agreeing with her. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. and it's a, for anybody and anybody that's done it could probably tell you, there's a lot of things that happen. And who takes the blame? The contractor takes the yep. blame. And it's not as But well. we yeah. know, you know, we've been around enough to know it's not the contractor. I mean, it's a whole web of things yeah. that have to happen sure. to make things click. Mm -hmm. And it's just a painfully slow process. And especially this time of year, we've been blessed because the weather's been great, yes. you know, and we're living in our basement, the cave down there. And yeah. it's comfortable, uh -huh. you know. Um, but I want, I want my house back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For those of you who uh, didn't see the update tour of their renovation, um, they basically took the deck off and they were going to enclose that into the house and make it dining room but it's turned into like this take the roof off new roof line um extended even further than the deck was uh and then you there was discoveries like the kitchen floor was an inch higher or so yeah. than the rest yeah. of the floor on the first uh, on the first floor yeah. and so they ended up having to remove everything out of the kitchen all the lower cabinets but thankfully like you guys found that there was a, a wiring issue they would not have found that right. could have caused a fire had that not been an yeah, issue and that wiring issue has been there forever you know yeah. and then they found the you know the leak behind the shower mm -hmm. wall mm -hmm. wouldn't have found that if we hadn't been tearing out stuff yep. uh okay so it's just some random ones what is your favorite farm animal and or pet i know it's not horses no horses i grew up with horses and no, nah, we and horses aren't friends. <laughs> horses will be they my friend will one bite day. me, kick me, buck me <laughs> off. That's basically the three things they, they do. They can sense me. your fear. Uh, we had dogs all growing up. You guys just haven't had a dog for the last yeah. little, I mean, it's yeah. been maybe 10 years. or. Yeah, we never thought we'd ever be without a dog, mm -hmm. ever. And we still kind of want to. Mm -hmm. But after, you know, our last dog passed away mm -hmm. and was gone, um, she was the best. Be yeah. <laughs> like you she, can't beat her. And became um, like one yeah. of our kids. You know, when, when yeah. your kids are all, people that have gone through this know this. When, when your kids all leave home and they're all gone, you've got your dog at home and they become your kid. You think, oh, I'm never going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to act like that. Yeah. You do. Mm -hmm. You know what? It just, it's just, it's what it is. Yeah. And so you long for that dog again and think, well, we'll get another dog. And, but it's the freedom that it gives us not having the dog. Yeah. You know, right now we got a loony bin of a cat that hangs around and keeps control of the mice, you know, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Kind of wants to come in the house, but really not, because mm -hmm. if it gets in the house, it, she freaks out and runs back out the door. Yeah. And she was feral when we had, when we had just kept her and adopted mm -hmm. her and started feeding her. And, and uh, so we don't have to do anything. Yeah. If we That's fill right. the food, if we're going to go away for a long weekend, mm -hmm. we just fill the food bowl and hope the raccoons don't clean it out. Yeah. Um, you know, but she but she catches her own food too. But we, so we take care of her. I keep the I keep the cattle watering tank going year mm -hmm. round just because of that cat. <laughs> and there's a heater under there that cha ching cha ching. You're yeah. paying to keep that water thawed all winter. Yeah. But the cat can sit up on there and drink. Yeah. And then we don't have to go worry about water. Mm -hmm. Cats are low maintenance outside. Yeah. Yeah. For the so. Most part. Yeah. But the dog is different. Mm -hmm. You either have to go board him somewhere. Yeah. Or have somebody yeah. hands on. A lot more responsibility yeah. there. So we don't know. What is the favorite part of your garden? 
Well, like favorite things that I like to plant and No, the and favorite grow. part. Do you have a favorite mm. part of your garden? Area of our whole yard, yeah. we're talking, or edibles? Favorite uh, part of your garden. You can make it whatever you want. Okay. Well, usually I'll you know sneak out and plant certain things. Yeah. And it's usually some weird variety of sweet corn. Mm -hmm. And I like to plant okra out there. Mm -hmm. And or or putting anything that's a bulb like mm -hmm. garlics or any kind of flower bulbs yeah and get out there and plant them and so then in the spring boom susan sees them. yeah <laughs> sees them. i have Surprise. fun doing that um you know what i've realized about our yard and the same thing you guys already know here what a camera can do for your yard mm -hmm. we walk around our yard and work in it every day it's just our yard mm -hmm. but and it's nice you know susan's done she's got the design she's got the eye and the mind mm -hmm. for putting things together yeah and it's nice very nice but when a camera, to, even me with my phone, I can take pictures mm -hmm. and look back at them and there'd be five misses and then boom. And it's like, look what that area of our yard really looks like yeah. to just a snapshot. And that just tells you what you're living in yeah. and how yeah. grateful you are that it, it's like that. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it really is. Robin Garcia said, if your dad was in charge of developing the dirt lands, which is what we call the Thornfelt property that we bought, mm -hmm. what would your vision be for that property? What would you do with it? Oh, I'm going to disappoint you with my answer because it's not flashy at all. Pasture? Uh, pasture. <laughs> yeah. At this point, if I were 30 years younger, you know, I might put more of the houses out there mm -hmm. and start, you know, growing more things. Oh, the greenhouses. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah gotcha. And uh, covered growing, mm -hmm. that kind of deal. Mm -hmm. and, and you could do, yeah, there's so many things you can expound on and, and expand and do mm -hmm. in that area. Yeah. But... Uh, you know, for me right now, that's how I feel. I'm kind of leaning pasture myself. Yeah. So similar vision. Okay. Uh, Kim said, I would be curious about his thoughts on the future of where gardening is going. I know that's a broad question. Maybe your thoughts on vertical gardening or climate controlled gardening going forward. Well, in urban areas, the vertical gardening and patio gardening things already there. Yeah. It's, and there's products every year, new products have come out for the last 20 years emphasizing that small space gardening mm -hmm. and vertical gardening, mm -hmm. container gardening, anything that's easy on a patio. Yeah. And then the drip systems. Mm -hmm. Aaron's a king. Yes. Drip systems. Yeah. Right, Aaron? Yeah. <laughs> um, and me, I, you know, I get them. When they're working, they're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm getting off topic. Uh, well, like, do you do you see any trends or any anything like taking over? Like, I know that there was a question about regenerative regenerative gardening in here and gardening with the environment in mind and like soil health and you know not constantly putting fertilizers. Yeah, in that sort I, of thing. I think our area here. One big thing is how you treat your soil, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we're way behind in this area, I think, based on our seed sales. We're way behind the Midwest on cover crops mm -hmm. as a viable, as a means of control for uh, soil pests. Yeah. Um, putting, returning organic matter in the soil. Mm -hmm. Some of the cover crops are so efficient at pulling things out of the soil that other plants cannot. Mm -hmm. And then you plow those in and they return these nutrients to the mm -hmm. soil and it form usable to other plants. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason. Uh, they're just, there's, numerous benefits to that mm -hmm. um you know when you see no-till gardening yeah. um you know things like that that you know the the trade journals are full of things like that mm -hmm. leaning you toward and, and the organics on that same line the organics have become bigger mm -hmm. they were harder for us to sell in the past because they were way more expensive sure. than the what i'll call conventional fertilizers mm -hmm. In reality, the organics are the conventional fertilizers, but yeah. what we call, you know, chemical fertilizers. Mm -hmm. um, now, with petroleum the way it is, mm -hmm. the chem it's leveled the playing field. Mm -hmm. They're all the same cost now. Mm -hmm. So that and the, and actually, um, can I say names here? Company names, or is it better sure. to stay out of that? You can cut it out. Yeah, we can, we can cut <laughs> but, it out. But of it. Uh, yeah, when we started using the tones, yeah. Which, how many years ago? For us, mm -hmm. maybe eight or ten years ago, maybe. The tones? Yeah, You've maybe. used their lawn fertilizer for a lot longer than yeah, that. Yeah, we have. And it could yeah. be longer than that. Time mm -hmm. flies. But um, those things, 
become part of the soil, mm -hmm. the living soil, mm -hmm. because of what they're built of, mm -hmm. what they're made up of. They're, where chemical fertilizers leach, boom, and they go through and they're yeah. gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these things are, and, and a lot of things that trips a lot of people up that are want, deciding what to use, they say, well, why don't I buy this 2100 or this triple 16? 16% mm -hmm. nitrogen or 21% nitrogen. This garden tone's only whatever it is, four three, or 5% yeah, or three, you know. Five, yeah. And I said, that 3% nitrogen or 4% nitrogen is gonna feed nitrogen to your plants a lot longer than that is. Mm -hmm. and, and so people start realizing that. So I've seen a big growth there okay. in the organic yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, yeah, that's great. That's... Maria said, I would like your dad to tell us what made you accept uh, the invitation to do the Q&A today. Uh, it wasn't hard at all. You wasn't know, hard? I, yeah, I just in, in, in a broad sense, I just stay away from the camera when I see you coming around or I try to or I'll be I walking try. along in the background. I know that you don't want to be in the background, uh, yeah, so I try uh, to steer it away. too. I stay away from it. But something like this, it's more direct and it's easy. I just, you know, all I'm going to do is say what I think. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and you know what, Maria? They can edit stuff out of this. Too, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, this is so. a, an easy one to con con control the outcome there a little go. bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Carla said, you hit the jackpot with both your sons-in-law. Hey. Did you uh, do you spend time with them beside the garden center? Plus, did they get, uh, well, let's see. Did they ask permission to marry you, girls? You did, kind of, didn't you? Yeah, they both, yeah, they both asked to meet with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but you know what? It it wasn't a. We knew, yeah. You know, everybody knew. And if we didn't approve, from the very beginning, it probably never would have got to that point. Yeah. So basically, it was just more of a conversation. It wasn't a can I? Yes. Yeah. It's like this is my <laughs> welcome intentions. to the fold. Yeah. <laughs> we dated for five. Aaron and I dated for five months, and it was five months after that that we were married. So it was a ten month deal. Yeah. 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 Ours was what's seven, seven months. Yeah. Yeah. Yours so yeah, months. but both the son in laws. You know, we're proud of them just like we are our own kids, mm -hmm. you know, for what they've achieved, mm -hmm. you know, through work. Mm -hmm. And Hard that's work. the thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it didn't just fall in their lap. It, right. They work. Right. Uh, Chastity said, if you could grow one perennial, I included this one because I actually want to know. If you could grow one perennial for the rest of your life, what would it be? I tried uh, to think. Like, I tried man. to think if I had to guess you that gotta for him. you got to be kidding me. You know what? That's a great question. Yeah. But it's one that I'll answer different next week, and I'll answer it different the week. When I start thinking about it, it'll take me a while to process the question mm -hmm. and think about what the actual favorite is. Right now in our yard, and I know this isn't a, well, herbaceous peonies. Yeah. You know, I love them. I know, yeah. you know, some people, well, that's a bush. That's not a perennial. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it comes back every year. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll call yeah. it a perennial. Right. But I think it's because... They're so fleeting. And then the other thing, that's not what you're asking, but bulbs. You like the bulbs. I love bulbs yeah. because of that. You plant the bulbs in the fall, and it's that anticipation. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've ever had them fail. They no. just work. Yeah. And, and the whole time I'm thinking perennials. <laughs> so I think if I had to answer that question, I know you weren't asking me, but if I had to answer it, I would, I, my mind goes right to the workhorse perennials like sedum, stone, like upright sedums. Yeah. They look good all the time, even in the winter time, and hardy mm -hmm. geraniums. The color yeah. and then the fall color that they have <coughs> mm -hmm. is so intense. Yeah, I like I the know. geraniums. There's um, so many different yeah, And you know, lately, because of the way our place has evolved, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you've experienced that here, is hostas. They do better at your house than our house. We have been, mm -hmm. and we don't have the slugs terribly bad yet. Mm -hmm. We've got them. Mm -hmm. uh, where they show up from, where oh, they come from, but they show up. Yeah. Um, but the hostas, we've done so many different things with hostas. Mm -hmm. And of course, hellebores have become one of them. Together, collectively, yeah. hellebores are a big one for us too. He doesn't like hellebores. Yeah. Shame. Shame. <laughs> yeah, no. Just for the hell of it. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy said, if you could have done anything else in life outside of gardening slash farming, what would you have done and what would it be? Um, when I was going to college, Cenex awarded a scholarship. I got a, a Cenex scholarship, Cenex Corporation, which is a big agricultural company. Mm -hmm. And when I had a meeting with their, one of their big wigs after I graduated, um, he offered me a position mm -hmm. and I would have had to have traveled uh, to Minneapolis to uh, take this job and it was mm -hmm. an office job. And I never really thought 
of myself mm -hmm. as an office, even though I spend most of my time in my office now. Um, but I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of stayed back. And at the same time, that's when the owner of Andrews at the time knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. And he approached me at that point or shortly after that point, uh, why don't you and Susan consider buying some shares? I'll mm -hmm. offer you some of my shares in the business mm -hmm. and you can start buying my shares. Mm -hmm. Talk to Susan and see what she thinks. And, and if you guys decide together that this is something. He's a smart man. Yes, so we did. John. Yeah. yeah, he was. Mm -hmm. Deborah said, my dad is almost 80 and won't give up physically intensive gardening practices. Do you have any advice for keeping the joy of gardening and productivity without breaking yourself along the way? Well, you know, right now I'm experiencing a bad knee. You know, it's going to need replaced. It's just a matter of picking the time to do it. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's doing, it's doing what you know you can do. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's a pretty obvious answer too here. Don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't start something. And we've gardened long enough to know that just planting something and getting it going, that's not the work. Mm -hmm. The work comes later, mm -hmm. you know, when the weed pressure starts and yep. all the other things and even harvest, mm -hmm. you know, digging several rows of potatoes. Yeah, it's a lot of work. You know, so, so just do what you can handle mm -hmm. and enjoy it. Make it, keep it enjoyable. Yeah. And, you know, I've, we've got a lot of customers that are that age mm -hmm. and some even older. Mm -hmm. I had a good one where there was an old guy come in the nursery wanting to buy fruit trees. Mm -hmm. And so we're walking back toward the fruit trees and I looked down and I said, how the heck old are you anyway? <laughs> And he said, I'm 92. Aww. And I said, boy, you're an optimist. Mm. Oh. He mm -hmm. said, that's right. He goes, I'm expecting fruit in a couple of years off of these things. So, so you know, he's yep. still out doing it. Yep. Don't stop, though. Yeah. You yep. know. Uh, Sheila said, as the daughter of a farmer, I feel like we don't appreciate small farms enough. Do you have any thoughts on the future of small family-owned farms? I'm scared for them. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of our customers and a lot of the growers that grow for us are still family farms. And it's, it's instilling it in the next generation that's going to be so important because mm -hmm. people talk about, yeah, second generation can make it work, third generation will start slipping, and after mm -hmm. that it's gone. How do you keep it well, alive? Well, it doesn't have to be true. How do you keep that alive? Yeah, how do you keep the inspiration? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and unfortunately for a lot of the young people and the way things are now, they got to be paid. Yeah. And they got to be paid appropriately because there's a lot of other industries out there that, that are killing you on that. Yeah. Sure. You know, and mm -hmm. and that sounds like a, you know, to me that's a bad answer, mm -hmm. but it's true. Yeah. That drives everything out mm -hmm. there. Yeah. And and then they need to see the rewards from all that work. Mm -hmm. And successfully growing a crop for some would be reward enough. Yeah. But if they're going broke while they're doing that, mm -hmm. you know, that's different. And I think it's the key word to that is in the question, family. Mm -hmm. And that's just keeping the family unit together, working together, mm -hmm. and you know, keeping it going. Mm -hmm. And that's a tough thing too. Yeah. Okay, so I just went through the questions because I was sure I grabbed the one about the plant guarantee policy, but I can't find it. But it was something to the effect of, how do you really feel about the plant guarantee policy? Um, I think with the, with the plant guarantee policy we have, we were doing, uh, you know, you plant it, it's good you know, in the spring, We'll guarantee it until the fall. Yeah. You know, kind it's of like a deal. November if it dies 1st. in the first season, we'll replace it. But what I really think is if a plant leaves your place alive and healthy, mm -hmm. why does there need to be a guarantee policy? There doesn't. Because it's absurd. Yeah. Somebody it's has absurd. to do something to abuse that plant for yeah. it to die. Yes. And so we we kind of waffle on it. Susan She's more soft with it. She wants to keep a policy. I don't even want to have one. She doesn't like it either, but she's soft on it. But she keeps it. Her, to... She thinks it's probably a necessary thing to keep. Yeah. I don't want to have one. No. Um, I think, and we, and right now, a lot of times we just we don't really promote one mm -hmm. or advertise one. Mm -hmm. We usually take them on a case by case basis. Yeah. You know, and and if it's somebody that is a regular, you know their yard, you know yes. their gardening habits. Yep. Of course you take care of that yeah yeah but i had a, a person bring a plant in one time mm -hmm. and they had bought a number of them and we still had a number of the same ones out in the nursery because this was like a week or 10 days later yeah and they called me in because she was insisting that we replace the plants uh -huh. and they didn't know what to do and you know so i i came in and i, I probably didn't handle this correctly 
but I handled it based on what I thought. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, other than the obvious, I said this to the customer, that they get watered every day and, mm -hmm. and oh yeah, we watered them even twice a day. So I walked over and I looked at the pot and the soil was all pulled away from the sides of the pot. That's how dry it was. And I just looked at her and I said, you did not water this every day, here's why. And I showed her the plant. Uh -huh. I shouldn't have done that, but I did. Mm -hmm. And I said, you, this plant was not cared for. Uh -huh. I said, if you wanna see this same plant in the same size pot mm -hmm. and what it looks like today, right now, mm -hmm. the ones that have been cared for, yeah. I can go show you what they look like. Yeah. Like it's this your one, fault, lady. Yeah, this one has not <laughs> yeah. been cared for, and yeah. we're not going to, mm -hmm. you know, and I felt bad later. Mm -hmm. I probably, you know, shouldn't have done that, mm -hmm. but I was just staying true to what I thought. Yeah. It's usually the ones who ask about it, your plant guarantee policy, that are going to use it <laughs> yeah, later that's on. Right. Why are you asking that Yeah. Question? Well, it's <laughs> like, okay, so if you go to the grocery store and buy some milk, and then you get it home, and you accidentally put it in the cupboard instead of in the fridge, yeah. and then you take it back to the store because it goes bad. Yeah. Whose fault's that? That's not the grocery store's fault. That's called operator malfunction. Oh, and it just that's usually burns what me. it is. <laughs> Jeez, I just, yeah, I'm in the same camp as you are on the thoughts about that. That. I think that should be eliminated everywhere. Um, By the way, yeah. am I still on? Yeah. Because that, that same person, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what, how, or why, but I had the email address of that person. Oh. And um, I think they sent a Google review to us. <laughs> And we've only had two negative Google reviews in the years that I can remember, and they were both on me, <laughs> <laughs> just for speaking my mind. Yeah. I actually reached out and apologized to that person. Oh, because you were feeling so bad about it yeah. later. I, I, well, Even just a few days wrong. later, yeah. I, I said, you know, I should have handled it differently. Mm -hmm. I should have taken you away from the other customers and employees, sure. and maybe walked you outside and showed you yeah. what these plants looked like, and mm -hmm. not you know, so I, I, I can admit when I yeah, maybe it, overdo something. It never feels good later, yeah. but yeah, I, I think you were right in that situation. Yeah. Okay. Kathy said, I'm sure he is gobsmacked by you kids being a YouTube sensation. Such an awesome new world of ways to make a living. How are your parents adjusting to their newfound fame? Uh, I just, you know what? I abide. You abide. <laughs> well, yeah, kinda... I don't, we just roll with it. Yeah. I, I people, you, I, I walk through the back hall now and, you know, I go by the doorway and somebody that's in the store sees me walk by and they'll say, well, there goes the dad. Oh. So I just get called the dad. Yeah. And I don't know how they know. I, maybe I've been on something that they've seen. Yeah, you've been in the back And kind of with thing. Susan, it's, it's obvious. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and she has a good screen presence. She's a good one. That goes into the next question from Michelle. What does your dad think of your YouTube channel and does it affect his business in a positive way? Yes, it does. Yeah, and like I said, we're just, we're proud as can be of, of what's been achieved here. You guys, it's just, it's awesome. And we get a lot of, you know, a lot of times at the very first, if you're looking at strictly at a dollars and cents mm -hmm. thing, you're like, well, a lot of these people, I can't believe the wide, array of people that come in from all over the world yeah, even. Yeah, it's crazy, and, isn't it? And that are fans of yours, mm -hmm. and they just want to see the store where you work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are traveling, they can't buy stuff, mm -hmm. you know, or anything of any, you know, so, so it's not always about the dollars, mm -hmm. but a lot of times it is, mm -hmm. you know, people that are more local that come over. So yeah, it, it has helped a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. C. Morales said, I would ask your dad, as a gardener, what do you know now that you wished you would have known when you began to garden? That's a good question. Probably patience and, yeah. and knowing when to not push it. You know, like, oh, you can't grow this here. Yeah. You know, don't, don't, you know, but you're just going to go out and I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. just, just, yeah. Of course, a lot of things as you get older happen that way, mm -hmm. you know, but just the patience and, you know, giving it, you know, learn your way into yeah. it. And, it's okay and if you don't, fail. Can't get it all right now, no. you know. No. Uh, Deb said, what is your dad's plans for the garden center slash seed company, if any, going forward? Oh, Keep boy, on we going. toss that around all the time. Love to have, would love to have family members take it over <laughs> that'd be easy for me yeah i, I don't have Clean. i don't have any designs to retire no and i would probably be a thorn in their sides but no i could take a, i could take a subservient role not yet no but sometime yeah. before too long i could i could do that i i watched what the old 
I call him the old owner there. The, the owner, the guy that hired me there, I watched him as he aged mm -hmm. and he, he kept his foot in the door yeah. and stayed involved, mm -hmm. but he also had the right people around him. Mm -hmm. You know, you knew Dave. He had Dave helping him with the seed stuff yeah. in the office. Yeah. And, and Dave was good at that. Mm -hmm. You know, he really was. And um, so John knew that. Yeah. And he had Susan and myself working in the retail. Mm -hmm. You know, so he could come and go as he pleased. That was retirement for him. Yeah. And he never did retire fully. He had a, a cot set up in the, the back office. Yeah. So he could go back and have a rest if he needed to during the day. Yeah. yeah. I could see that happening one day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jennifer said, would love to hear you talk about some of your favorite trees, plants, and flowers. Oh, well, we know bulbs being one. Yeah, the bulbs, the peonies, and, and I think a lot of times the things that I really like are things that are fleeting. Yeah. And that's precisely why. Yeah. You don't get to enjoy them that long. Yeah. I get, we have one small tree, sl shrub slash small tree. We've kind of pruned it into a small tree. It's a uh, hibiscus, Rosa Sharon, uh, bluebird. Oh, yeah. And it's right next to our driveway. Yep. And it just, it's the most beautiful blue. And I look at that every night when I pull into the driveway, mm -hmm. every day when I'm just home. And I really enjoy that for some reason. Mm -hmm. yep. That one is, and it gives you color the second half of the season when most of the other plants yeah. like that Dog don't. Days. Right. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what it does this year because it was blooming with hardly any light. But now that that locust is gone, yeah, it might. It, it may, might. Just, I think it's going to thicken up a little bit more. Yeah, it's been a little sparse on leaves, but and the other thing is our birch trees. Yeah, we have a we planted three separate trees in a clump. It wasn't a clump to begin with, mm -hmm. and they're the Royal Frost birch. Or no, these were Purple Rain. Very, so they're one and yeah. the same almost to me. Yeah, um, but the beautiful, beautiful purpley red leaves in the spring when mm -hmm. they come out. And then they just darken to a deep, dark green with a purple hue to them. And in the fall, they kind of go orange. Yeah, they're so pretty. And I just, every year, mm -hmm. uh, I just love that tree. Mm -hmm. That you know, I love it too. Marilyn said, I'd like to ask what your advice is on raising children. Because I will go on to say, obviously he and your mom did a fantastic job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... Susan is the one that really did a fantastic no, job. You both did. I was along. I was along for support you both for the did. ride. I think, I think having them grow up and have ownership in, in things that they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, pride and ownership in the stuff that they're doing is, and then just being there for them. I think having a Christ-centered home too, which we did. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Um, like you guys, we were at church every single Sunday, every yeah. Wednesday, yeah. Um, and I think that that was really instrumental and really important to the structure and stability of our it family. It is. It's the best. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, too, that you guys instilled a sense of confidence in us. Like, I don't know how you did that, like how you championed that, because there's not a lot that I think any three of us feel like we couldn't accomplish if we I just think you find that. It. I think you find that yourself. Mm -hmm. I think what we do is we don't squash it. Sure as when the kids are growing you don't squash it they come up with something that they think is you know don't squash it don't tell them no don't do that don't you know yeah let it go sure See let them happens. go yeah and and <laughs> you know what do. i think you you grow into that you learn it as you're going mm -hmm. and i think everybody did mm -hmm. you know kaz said hi laura's dad what is your favorite project slash choice that laura and aaron have made in their garden that impressed you the most We've done a lot of changing around here. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, I can look around. I'm sitting in one of them yeah. right now. <laughs> yes. The greenhouse uh -huh. is fabulous. The pond, great addition. Mm -hmm. You know, Love you find that. yourself gravitating toward it or slowing down when you go by yeah. it. That says something right there. Yes. And then the expanse, the expanse of lawn. You've got all this cluster of good things. <laughs> Yeah. and you've got all this stuff closing you in mm -hmm. and then you walk out the other side of your house and you've got a lawn big enough you could put a football field out there if you want or a soccer field mm -hmm. breathing space <laughs> having that balance mm -hmm. is huge mm -hmm. our yard right now the reason i think that's so great is we don't have that mm -hmm. we don't have an expansive yard where i can set up a baseball diamond we have to go out in a pasture to do that that'd be difficult yeah yeah, yeah uh, on the slope yeah <laughs> Uh, what do you do for fun, enjoyment, or relaxation? That was a, actually a very asked question. What are your hobbies outside of um, You know, spring and summer, we tend to spend too much time working, probably. And 
A couple of things. One of them is just being able to putter around in your yard. The mm -hmm. key word being putter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be a huge time frame project that you're working on. Mm -hmm. Just being able to mess around and go out and work where you yeah. want in your yard. Yeah. So rewarding. Yes. But that's our life. That's our life. As far as outside the home, you know, I used to, when I fixed my knee, I'll do it again, but uh, we used to spend a lot of days down in Hell's Canyon, mm -hmm. uh, steelhead fishing in the winter. Mm -hmm. A couple of reasons. You go down there and you think you're in the mountains and how terrible it is, but you go down there in January or February, the weather is warmer there than it is here in the valley because you're down in the canyon mm -hmm. and go down there and fish for steelhead mm -hmm. and just and like i had to train joe when he first started going with me it's laura's brother joe um it's not called catching it's called fishing mm -hmm. so you don't have to catch something mm -hmm. you know just being down here for the day is yeah. victory enough yeah. and you know you're looking at little early wildflowers that come up the mm -hmm. little yeah you know wild parsley things like that but mm -hmm. um doing that and then of course we spent a lot of years skiing oh my you know, so many years uh, snow skiing yeah um and that was great mm -hmm. um outside stuff it seems like we just gravitate all of us gravitate toward outside, outside activities yeah, yeah and gardening for us like it's a job for both of us but mm -hmm. it's also like this passion that's consuming yeah like you don't really need it to does have anything else because yeah. that's what we travel for we travel to go look at gardens yeah. we travel yeah, that's true to garden centers because we love to visit other garden centers just to see how other people operate and like get ideas from everybody else you know well i think that's reality you yeah. don't have to pretend mm -hmm. that you go do a bunch of other stuff because no. there's nothing wrong with your Loving passion plants. your passion <laughs> yeah it's your passion it's yours yeah and you know, Susan and I like to go out and just drive out into the mountains, yeah. too, mm -hmm. and have a picnic by a stream or something like that mm -hmm. rather than a lake, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, it just puts you in a different place. Your whole mind is thinking different when you're yes. doing that kind of stuff. We enjoy right. that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, going forward, probably hiking some of the trails that are ready. Spend more time being able to do that stuff. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Sharon said, I remember laughing so hard when he said that arborvita are just plants waiting to die. Yeah. <laughs> what are other things that you would never plant slash grow? You don't never plant arbs because you've got some yeah, we've green got a, giants. A, yeah. We usually pick, not as a commodity plant, like you guys have had a great success with these arbs. I remember when we put them in though, you're like, I know. just wait. <laughs> yeah. But these are not, these are, these are a different cult. Yeah. They're a different cultivar. They're awesome. The North and Poles. And they've done really good, but you know, ask anybody, mm -hmm. anybody that pays attention, you drive around, even, even in areas where they grow better, you always see it. If there's 50 arbs going down a line, you're going to see eight or 10 cinnamon colored ones out there that are dead. And that's <laughs> just color. the way it is. <laughs> so I, I, you know, it's, it's true. I, I, I don't know, but they, a lot of people, I, I, that, I first heard that comment mm -hmm. that uh, it's a plant looking for a reason to die from a guy who grew them and sold them to the nursery industry. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, so. Are there any others that fall into that camp that you would never plant slash grow? Oh gosh, something that's supposed to be able to grow here and do okay, yeah, but or always just a plant dies. Yeah, that you just think is crap. Well, I don't I think they're crap, else. but hookeras, I wish they were a better perennial. Yep. You know, um, there's been a couple varieties that we've had come back three yeah. or four years They're in a row and do real good. Mm -hmm. And I love them for their accent. Mm -hmm. I think they're great. But grow them as an annual. And don't try to expect <laughs> them to be there every Expensive annual. Huh? They're an expensive annual. Well, yeah, but you know They're what? Pretty. What else are you going to spend your money on, I guess? I don't know. I know other people find stuff to spend money on. I don't know you what know, they're people, spending it on. People talk about Why wouldn't a perennial. you spend it all on plants? <laughs> Some people will talk about a perennial cup for three ninety nine, and uh -huh. I said, "Well, how much did that latte cost you right yeah, there?" Yeah, probably five bucks. That, that's going away. Yeah. You know, you'll have this all summer long. So you, <laughs> it's all relevant. Priorities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You guys are just too agreeable with plants. You know, and I don't want to have. You know, if I if I tell somebody I don't like garas, for example. Oh, how could you not like garas? You know, if I told somebody, I just picked that. Oh, okay. If I know. told somebody, did she leave and come back? I think they're back now. They just got back. Oh, they just got back? Yeah. Okay. My mom's with the kids. She took them to go have a cookie while we did this interview. I hope she brought me one. Yeah, she <laughs> did. Well. I made a coffee cake inside. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that'll work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't I don't like Gars where she put them. I think a lot of time oh, you, you hear the comment. She knew that though. She yeah, knew it was right wrong. plant, right place. Yeah. That has so much to do with whether you like it or not. You know what was wrong with that? She knew it was too much wispy. There was the fine line buckthorns, the gara, and then the artemisia. It was too much of that feathery stuff together. Yeah. And they yeah. need to, I do stuff like that. You just need to adjust. 
Uh, you should try Gara as a centerpiece in a pot somewhere. Yeah? It's, yeah. they're Like awesome. butterflies? Like Stratosphere White or Carole Petite Pink are the two I've Those tried. Those must be newer varieties. I think they are, yeah. and they are just phenomenal. Phenomenal. Well, even Euonymus, mm -hmm. which I can diss on quite a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a beautiful Euonymus right there that fits. Oh yeah, that, that was here when we moved in. Yeah, mm -hmm. that should be there. Yeah. Because it looks, it looks I mean, pretty. there's other things that could go there as a border if you want to do something different, mm -hmm. but that plant just fits. Next to that wayfaring tree looks that good. looks so but pretty. But I've been known to diss on those, so. <laughs> I know what I don't like are potentias. I am not a fan of potentias. Oh, the shrubs? Yeah. True. Yeah, they're like such a They're underperformers, underperformers. Underperformers here, anyway. I know they do well for people probably in the Midwest, I'm A guessing. lot of people will say that about barberries, too. Really? But barberries, because of their color, yep. you put those in the right place around the other colors, mm -hmm. and they're just pow. Yeah, and they're not invasive here, so no, it's not that something Concord weird. barberry? Yeah, wow. oh, it's yeah. like a grape color. Yep. Okay, last question, you guys. What's your thought? This is from Marion. What's your thought on the plant it high and it won't die philosophy? Like Aaron you mean does. having them humped up like this on the, <laughs> yes. on the ground? Well, it depends on the kind of soil you're working with and if you install a proper drip system. Yeah. Oftentimes, we plant something and we don't move the drips out there till later. Mm -hmm. So I create a bowl, right, uh -huh. wrong, or indifferent. Mm -hmm. I create a bowl so it's so easy to puddle water around that plant. Mm -hmm. Most of the plants, especially bigger shrubs and trees that die mm -hmm. in our area, are because people don't get water clear to the bottom of the root ball. Sure. And proof of that, uh, most of the soils around here, you can go out with a hose after you plant something and make a muddy mess. Mm -hmm. And, and then go back it. a couple hours later and you're wet this far down. Yeah. It's like the soil. But if you start with the soil moist from top to bottom, mm -hmm. You know what? That's victory. And then you just keep it wet. So and you would do the, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you would do the, the Hey little bye. man. You would man. fill the, the hole then you halfway with water. We went? Yeah. We went to the library. You went to the library? Yeah. How fun. Wow. We got 10 books in total. Oh, really? Did you rent some books? Bring some books home or you read them? I just read one and then I got it. That's really well, no, that's cool, awesome. Dude. Well, we're almost done in here. Oh. So you, you want to with us or you want to go inside? Well, um, Samantha went to the library with us too. Did she? We went to Jolton Juice and then the... Got a cookie? <laughs> nice. Oh, talk about the, the high Yeah, pack. so do you uh, fill your holes with I, water? I can't call it wrong because a yeah. lot of people... Holy moly, he Bin slammed man. that door. Yeah. The high plant deal, I can't call it wrong because a lot of people do it successfully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the landscapers do it. Mm -hmm. Majority of them don't, but some of them do. Aaron does. Aaron likes it. Yeah. But Aaron probably, knowing Aaron, mm -hmm. the drip goes on right now. Yeah, it does. And if that happens, you're good. Yeah. And there's another benefit to high planting, mm -hmm. even though I don't do it. A lot of plants around here die of root rot. Mm. So, you know what? Even plants that like a lot of water, mm -hmm. if it doesn't drain good, right. still can die a root rot. Right. So, you know, those are those are other advantages. Mm -hmm. Me, I don't want to water, I don't want to stand there and water the pot for the first couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. It's my fault for not installing the drip right away. But <laughs> I go like this and all the water just, and the dirt runs yeah. off everywhere and I'm just, you know, I'm not doing anything here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Slow drip to the roots. Also, I think you wanted to do high, especially because we wanted to bring in so much mulch. Mm -hmm that you know if you bring in so much mulch and you've already got it planted at ground level you yeah. have to really like like not put very much around the tree because right. it just creates that well, hole. The, the problem that some people would have with high plant that i have is what i just mentioned about the water running off mm -hmm. but you can mitigate that you, i mean by what you add to the soil uh -huh. and then you got your mulch over the top mm -hmm. and of course the number one thing is if you're putting drippers on there yeah. it's not a problem i think that that is it. I mean, there were so, so many great questions. Um, a lot of them were were kind of similar in nature. So I think we hit it. We hit most everything. And it's possible we could do a part two. We might even do maybe one with mom, you and mom both. Maybe Aaron as well. That would be fun to do like a round table. Yeah, we could fight on screen. Yeah. Okay. That'd be fun. Um, so anyway, okay. thank you for okay, agreeing you to thank do you. that. Yeah. <laughs> do this with us today. Thanks and for all the questions too. Oh, yeah. That's kind of neat. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.